heart very heart rate variability. Um, okay. So I'm gonna let you introduce yourself. Okay. All right, everybody. Hey, my name is Anand. Um, I see some familiar faces in the crowd, but if you don't know me, I was, um, in high school. I used to come work at the you know wellness program, and then last year I did a sleep study on how it can affect your health, and you know we had a good amount of participants, and then. Um, a year later, you know, we're working on and get that um article published and whatnot, and basically just doing a little presentation on um the the results we found, and you know, I feel like everyone here just wants to know how sleep is affecting your health on a daily day basis. So, thing. Okay. So here's just an introduction. A definition of sleep. A you know, it's a state characterized by reduced physical activity, sensory disconnection, um, and altered consciousness. Um, the importance of sleep for your health is you know it's it's essential for cognitive function. You know it's emotional regulation, immune system support, and very important for your physical health. What is heart rate variability? So for our study, this was, you know, what we were looking at. We were looking at how, you know, the HRV numbers are correlating with the amount of sleep that you're getting um, in a night's rest. So it's the variation in time between each heartbeat reflecting the body's ability to adapt to um, the environmental changes. Why HRV is a very you know, important factor for your health is higher HRV is associated with better cardiovascular fitness, stress resilience, and reduced risk of chronic disease. Right. So the connection between sleep and HRV. Good sleep enhances parasympathetic activity leading to higher HRV, which indicates a well-functioning autonomic nervous system. For the people that don't know what you know, the parasympathetic uh, nervous system is, it's basically the part of your body where, you know, it's it's known as the rest and digest. So when you're having good sleep, you know, the parasympathetic system is enhanced. So you're, you know, you're digesting food better, your, your body's more relaxed, your, your heart rate, you know, is lower, uh, your digestive food more. And so the role of REM, REM sleep in HRV is REM sleep is crucial for emotional processing and memory consolidation, contributing to balanced autonomic function and improved HRV. You know, there's a good side to it, but there's also a bad side. Um, insufficient or fragmented sleep can lower your HRV, indicating increased stress levels and potential health issues. So this can be, you know, the others system known as a sympathetic nervous system. This is where, you know, you're always, your stress levels are high, your heart rate is elevated a little bit more than normal, which, you know, can affect your sleep. So here are some <clears throat> factors that affect sleep quality. Number one, daily stress levels. You know, this is something for all of us. High stress can <clears throat> activate the sympathetic nervous system, disrupting sleep and lowering HRV. So it's, you know, it's very important, you know, every day we all deal with stress. So it's very important to know how to <clears throat> deal with those stress levels so we can have a good HRV and not have it uh, with a low number. Number two, physical activity. Regular exercise promotes deeper sleep and increases HRV by enhancing parasympathetic activity. So you guys are at the wellness program now. So, you know, it's it's good that you guys are coming, coming in, doing the exercises, even though if it's, you know, you're having a bad day, you're not fully energized, but it's still better than nothing. And diet and nutrition, nu nutrient-rich food support sleep, sleep quality, Avoid caffeine and heavy meals before bedtime to prevent sleep disruption. Um, exposure to light. Natural light exposure during the day aids in regulating circadian rhythms, while blue light from screens at night can disrupt sleep. So this is why a lot of 
times, you know, when people aren't, aren't able to go to bed, it's probably because, you know, they're on their phones or, you know, watching TV, which, you know, is messing up their circadian rhythms. And how lifestyle factors can influence HRV. Um, number one, stress management techniques. Practices such as meditation, deep breathing, and yoga can lower stress hormones and improve HRV. And I can attest to this. Uh, you know, I used to do uh, meditation a little while ago, and I can really say that, it, you know, it calms you down. It, it definitely lowers your stress um, levels quite a bit, and it just kind of gives you, you know, that moment where you can just, you know, relax, take a deep breath, and just be in the moment. Um, exercise and physical fitness. Consistent physical activity boosts cardiovascular health and elevates HRV, indicating better stress adaptation. Again, dietary choices and hydration. A balanced diet with adequate hydration supports autonomic function, thereby enhancing HRV. So as you can see, I'm really putting an emphasis on the exercise and the dietary choices in the hydration part because, you know, it's... You know, yeah, you know, when you're exercising, it can make you tired, but there's always positive benefits that you're getting from exercising. And, you know, it's also in releasing endorphins, which, you know, give you, it just makes you feel good. And a consistent sleep schedule. Maintaining regular sleep and wake times helps stabilize circadian rhythms, promoting better HRV. So this is the part where we, you know, I'll whoever participated um, took place in. So benefits of tracking sleep and HRV, understanding personal sleep patterns, tracking reveals insights into sleep duration, quality, and disturbances, helping to identify areas for improvement, um, identifying lifestyle factors by, you know, how you can pinpoint stress, exercise, and diet affect HRV, enabling personalized lifestyle adjustments, uh, number three, improving overall health and well-being. Using data to make informed decisions can lead to enhanced sleep, reduce stress, and better overall health. <clears throat> um, so I think the biggest challenge everyone faced during this trial that we had was how to set up the watch. So there's different um watches or different companies that have their devices where most of all pretty much all of them you know have built-in sleep and hrv tracking capabilities a lot of the devices people are more common with um are apple watches and fitbits and i think one of the participants also had an aura ring so that's that was you know, a device where it's basically a ring and it's it also has built-in sleep tracking um program. So that was something that I didn't even know was around, but was really cool to see how um a ring can track your sleep. Um so yeah, we during our study, you know, what we did was we it was a 14-day trial, so we made sure you know, data was getting logged in every day. So making sure that everyone was running the device consistently and sure that it was charged and follow up um, on the log to, in order to track the data. So some apps that, you know, are, rec are recommended for sleep tracking are um, Sleep Cycle is one of them, Auto Sleep, the Fitbit app, um, Features and benefit, and then for each one of these apps, you know, it tracks your sleep cycles. There's, um, it tracks your, the HRV and it gives you personalized insights to improve sleep quality and daily health. I think most, I think some of these apps you may have to, um, pay. I mean, I think you get like a free version, but then if you want to receive more data or more insights on, you know, more than just like your heart rate, your HRV. You know, how long you're in bed, what your REM sleep, what your deep sleep is. Um, I think those are the basically some of the questions um that you may have that aren't available to you. So you may have to pay the extra fee in order to get those. But most of these apps can give you the basics like how 
how much REM sleep you're getting, how much deep sleep are you really getting, how much time you're spending in bed, but you're not really sleeping, you know, how much deep sleep are you really getting? Because deep sleep is where, you know, you're in a stage where you don't get a lot of it when you sleep, but that's the period of time where you're getting your, where your body's really relaxed. You're getting the most rest um, you can. And you're having the maximum level of rest while well, majority of the time is going to be REM sleep where you're like dreaming and um, still in a good sleeping stage. So way to use, you know, the health, um, the sleep, sleeping apps on your watches, you know, you're, you can analyze deep REM and light sleep stages to understand their impact on health and well-being, um, basically interpreting HRV data, um, I, higher HRV indicates better autonomic balance and stress resilience, track trends over time for actionable insights. And then using using the data to improve your your sleep quality. So we had you know participants fill out a PSIQ questionnaire and an SF thirty six questionnaire, and there was a lot of it was basically questions about you know how many hours of sleep are you getting a night? What is how what is your sleep quality? What um like what's your fatigue levels? You know. And these are questions when you're, you know, you don't realize on a day-to-day -day basis, but when you're filling them out, I think that's when people really realize like, wow, you know, I'm not getting that much sleep or I'm drinking coffee right before I'm trying to go to sleep. And maybe that might be the reason I'm not sleeping. So there's a lot of, you know, factors and aspects that go into it. And it's always a good thing to, you know, see your data and then, you know, build off on that and then it's always you know a good way to improve in this case improve your sleep quality and so here are some tips um to optimize the best sleep that you can every night um, you want to create a relaxing bedtime routine excuse me establish calming pre-sleep habits like reading or meditation to signal the body that it's time to sleep. You definitely don't want to, you know, be in a hyper stage or be excited before you go to bed because you'll, you'll go to bed, but you probably won't sleep. So it's, you know, it's nice to do something relaxing before you go to bed. Um, so you're calm, your parasympathetic nervous system kicks in a little bit, um, lowers your heart rate, you're more relaxed, you know, you're not stressed. Um, number two, reducing screen time before bed. Limit exposure to screens at least an hour before sleep to prevent blue light from disrupting melatonin production. Um, so this is where we were talking earlier about the exposure of, of like red natural light and how, you know, there's a difference between natural light and blue light. Blue light is something that, you know, disrupts this rhythm, whereas natural light can, you know, make sure your rhythm is on a good pace. So that's why, you know, limiting like your phone use or like TV time before you go to bed is a good way to disrupt your sleep. So make sure you're not, yeah, try to get off the phones. Um, practicing mindfulness and relaxation techniques, engage in mindfulness meditation or deep breathing exercises to reduce stress and improve sleep quality. Um, last thing, maintaining a consistent sleep schedule, go to bed and wake up at the same time daily, even on weekends to stabilize your internal clock and enhance HRV. Another thing I wanted to say is I know on the weekends, everyone, you know, we want to sleep in, we want to, you know, sleep a little bit longer than we do on the weekdays. But there is something where if you sleep for too long, so let's say your regular amount of sleep that you're getting is, you know, six to seven hours. But when the weekends come, you're, you know, you're getting nine to 10 hours of sleep. There is a thing where if you sleep too long, you sleep too much, you'll, it'll mess up your rhythm. It'll mess up, you know, your body. Um, Cause your body's, you know, used to uh running on so much uh, amount of sleep. It'll make you even tired throughout the day, regardless if you got 
10 hours of sleep when you're, you know, when your normal cycle is six to seven. And this is something that I find out the hard way where I would, you know, during the week with school and everything, like working in the clinic, all this, you know, I'm not getting as much sleep. But once the weekend comes, I try to get like 10 hours of sleep and I'm still very tired throughout the day. So then I found out that, you know, yeah, I'm getting good amount of rest, but it's also making my day very tiring. Then I have a video. Um, I want to show you guys. So copy and paste that into your browser, maybe. Yeah, the little like zoom. Uh -huh. Did you have something off? Are you guys able to hear us? Mm -hmm. So you might be trying to figure out how you can go ahead and actually track your sleep on. Can you guys hear the video? Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. On your Apple Watch Series Nine or any Apple Watch for the most part. Now, doing this is actually fairly basic. I have my older Apple Watch here, but it's basically the same process. What you're going to want to do is you want to hop inside of your Apple Watch and you want to click on the little track, you know, the digital crown on the right side of your Apple Watch. And you'll come into this type of panel or a panel that looks like this. Now, what you're going to want to do is you want to find this like a bedtime application. So it's like this light blue application. It looks kind of cool, but this is essentially what you're going to want to click on. So what you're going to want to do is click on that little like bedtime thing. And it's going to say, use sleep to schedule your wake up alarm, all this other stuff. And what it's going to do is if you want, you can go ahead and scroll down. You can tap next. And essentially what you can do is you can go ahead and start tracking your sleep. Now the Apple Watch Series 9 is way more accurate of tracking sleep than some of these older watches. So definitely keep that in mind. So what we can do is we can set a sleep goal. It says with a goal, sleep can, you know, whatever. So what you want to do is you want to set however many hours you want to go ahead and sleep. So go through here, choose the hour, you know, the amount of time you want to go and just sit there and sleep. So then you can choose next, and then you can set a schedule of your specific, you know, sleep time. So now what you can do is you can go and sit here and you can just go ahead and, you know, choose it every day and choose an alarm. You can go and change all of these things, whatever else you want to go and change and do. You can go and do that here. And then from there, that's basically all you're going to have to do. From here, once you set your bedtime and you set your time and everything, then it's going to go ahead and just, you know, the little button at the bottom is going to allow you to go and click next. And that is essentially all you're going to have to do. So from that point going on, you should be good to go. And you can go and, you know, move on with these panels. And then you can go start tracking your sleep on your Apple Watch Series 9. So that is basically how it's done. It's a super basic process. If you have any other thoughts or questions, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button. That me so much. All right. No, but I think there's enough. I with the ring. Because, like, the ring, I don't, I'm not conscious of, but the watch bothers me. So, how do you get feedback from your ring? Does it? There's a little charger you put it on, and it links through Bluetooth to the app, and then it down, just downloads it every morning to your phone. Not, well, to I have my app on my iPad. Because then I can blow up the screen and see it <laughs> without putting on my glasses. <laughs> yeah, I think I've heard I've heard about the Aura Ring. I I've heard it's you know it's really good, but it's it's definitely more, you know, on the expensive side. <laughs> so I think like you know like a Fitbit or you know some Apple Watches aren't that too expensive. Um, there's definitely devices where you know it's more on the affordable side and. I think it's a good way to really see, you know, are you really sleeping or not? Are you, you know, just in bed? Are you, it depends on how you feel the next day. Do you think that you got a good amount of sleep, but you are still feeling very tired the next day? So, you know, using like a program where that's tracking your sleep and you can see how your heart rate is fluctuating throughout the night and, you know, always help. I, I want to pick on Kevin because he's in the room here and he actually does track his sleep. So yeah. how has your behavior changed since you've been well, done, done this? So I didn't really have a sleep routine. So now I have sleep. Can you hear him Anand or not? Yeah, I can. Okay. So I do now I have a sleep routine and targets for when I 
I, my wake up was already set because that's when I got to get up and feed the cats. Mm -hmm. So I worked backwards to when I should go to bed because <laughs> they wait for me. Um, so then I, I'm doing the same thing, turning off the electronics an hour before I go to bed. I try to read something. Right now, yeah, reading. yeah, yeah. Reading a book is really good. It always makes me drowsy. Then yeah. I do uh, deep breathing and relaxation, a little bit of meditation. And I also use a picture of marijuana to help me get sleep. But based on your tracking, you've made some behavioral adjustments that have helped yes. you. And so, yeah. So, um, what I focus in is, is the deep sleep because some nights I'll get seven minutes of deep sleep and other nights I'll get 54 minutes of deep sleep. So I'm trying to get that to consistently come out the more time each night. It's, it's hard. Yeah, I think, I think Kevin, yeah. So you, you said you're getting, you know, seven minutes one night, 54 minutes in the other night. I think you should try to see the, what, what, what are you doing the day that you're getting seven minutes? And then mm -hmm. what are you doing the day you're getting 54 minutes? Maybe when you're doing, you're getting 54 minutes, you're exercising that day you're you know you're getting sunlight you know you, you might be doing um more activity that day compared to when you're you know getting only seven minutes and it can also it can also be a factor of you know what you eat throughout the day um you know if you're having caffeine consumption or not and other factors like that Yeah, I've been pretty focused on my food and intake since mm -hmm. my contact. But um and I stopped eating like around six o'clock. That's the last time I had eat. And eating for a ten o'clock bedtime. Yeah. Um but uh yeah, the activity thing during the day is probably the one thing that I can focus on more. Yeah. So does anybody else in here track their sleep? I don't think you guys do, right? You need track sleep? Yeah. I may start doing that now. <laughs> good, good. You know, you, you'll, you'll learn a lot of things that, you know, you thought you knew, but once you see the numbers, you know, you'll you'll find a way to, you know, adjust those numbers to your liking, and then, you know, it's always a positive impact. Can you answer this question? Um, what do you think about the Fitbit? I think it's a good device. I think, you know, that's more, I think that's with um, Samsung, if I'm not mistaken. But, you know, they have the the programs that you need. It You know, it, it, it also tracks your activity throughout the day, how many steps you're getting in, how many calories you're burning um kind of everything that an apple watch does as well you know you're getting your heart rate or i think it can also get your blood pressure as well and then you can also have it programmed to your sleep um, needs and then it'll give you feedback on you know what you may do what you may want to stop doing i know for um like my mom she wears an apple watch and if she doesn't, you know, exercise throughout the day or if she doesn't get her steps in, it'll, you know, it'll tell her saying, it'll give her like reminders throughout the day saying you need to, you know, get your steps up or you haven't walked at all today. Make sure you, you know, uh, finish your ring. But yeah, I think the Fitbit is a very good um, investment for does, sure. Does it? How how is the compatibility with say an Android phone like a Samsung? I think it's I think it's good. Yeah, it's Let me pretty check. I think I think Fitbit is a Samsung product. It is a Samsung Samsung product? Google no. Bought it. What is this? What's that? I'm sorry, Ivan. What did Google you acquired uh, Fitbit. Google. Oh, Google. Oh, Google. I have, so Google, if you have it on your phone, right? Can use a Fitbit device. Am I right? Yes. So Google bought it to develop their own watch called the Google Pixel Watch. So oh. basically to acquire patents and the, the team of people that were developing watches for Fitbit, they have all that talent now for Google. 
Wow. Okay. I guess I need to look into this more. <laughs> but yeah, yeah Fitbit. So yeah, Fitbit is owned by Google. Yeah. Okay. okay. But you should you shouldn't you shouldn't have any problems um with the compat compatibility with like an Android. Okay. That That's should be perfectly you fine. Have a Fitbit? Uh no, but I've had my eyes on a Fitbit for the last few months. This yeah. might this this might be the final stretch. <laughs> I'm looking where I can get it for the cheapest. Is it online versus buying it at Best Buy? You should you should try to when you're searching it up, just search up like Fitbit and see the refurbished ones. Aha. Okay. Those 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 tend to be a little cheaper and it's you know, it's might have been someone that just that bought it and then just like returned it because of something and then they, you know, fixed it up and now it's marked at a lower price. You okay. should still be getting the same benefits. It should still, you know, be working as it's supposed to be. And refurbished are the prices are tend to be a lot lower than what like the normal retail prices. Okay, that's good news. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you for that info. Of course. Yeah, so for Aura Ring, I bought the second generation. They have a third generation, and I bought it on eBay. So I paid less than a hundred dollars when it cost three hundred dollars for it, and it came with the charger and everything. So I. I purposely chose a down web one to cut costs and then use eBay and just search mm -hmm. until I found one that I could was reasonably priced and I bought it that way. This whole room is about last year's models. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, yeah. No, thank yeah. you. Uh, this was great. Yeah, and you don't need the latest models. Like, you know, whatever generation they have up to date now, the generation before is probably going to be a lot cheaper because, you know, everyone wants to buy the new generation, but it's still going to work, you know, really good. It's still going to be up to date because, you know, a year ago, that was the best watch out there. So a year later, it's not going to, you know, defect in any type of way. No. Anybody else have any comments or questions? <clears throat> so thank you so much, Anon. That was great. No problem. Hopefully from this presentation, you guys may get a device that can track your sleep or you, you know, f try to see what you're doing in your daily life to be better. And um, hopefully that can help you get better sleep. We'll always hope. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Have a good one. That was good.